Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. In this month of Muharram, at this door of repentance, how do we approach when we've identified really ugly traits like the capacity for treachery, disloyalty, and cowardice? How can there be any progress until one can overcome such severe character deficiencies? Thank you for answering, even the most unworthy of servants. How to overcome very bad characteristics? Alhamdulillah, at least the first step in overcoming is to acknowledge them. So when we write the ruinous traits and say, Ya Rabbi, if I have this characteristic, this characteristic, this characteristic, and then print it and look at it and say that, Ya Rabbi, give me a strength every day to over overpower this characteristic. That how to overcome enmity and anger and jealousy and how to overcome all these characteristics with our salawat, with our meditation. We have to know the sickness before we can reach to a cure. So the first step is who knows himself, then Prophet described, then they'll know their Lord. So it means that when I diagnose myself and with all honesty I make my meditation that we described in the other talks and in the meditation book that the reason you meditate are many reasons. One on this subject it's a mirror of truth so that when I got my muraqabah, madad, 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 like I'm all set in it, I begin to meditate, I visualize a shaykh in front of me, Sayyidi let me to understand my characteristics and what I did wrong this day, this week and identify the key ones. Because if you try to meditate alone you probably come out with your nafs saying, you're pretty good, don't worry about it, the other person's bad. But as soon as you meditate with the shaykhs and you feel their presence is with you, they are a mirror of truth and begin to outline for you everything you said wrong, the feeling that you had was wrong, the, the interaction with this individual was wrong and then you can begin to identify the characteristics. Uh oh, I have jealousy, I have enmity, I have uh, anger, all these issues when I'm meditating with the muraqabah and then I'm writing that down and I begin to know myself. And every time my meditation, please take anger away, please take this characteristic away. You ought to be inspired within me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How to take this anger away. Make my salawats, make lots of salawats. In Salat al Najat, the, the, after tahajjud at fajr time. In Salat al Najat, asking Najat and salvation. Ya Rabbi, take away two rakahs. Salat al Najat means the prayer of salvation. That in your sujood, stay in sujood and begin to cry to Allah that, take away my character, take away this character, take away this. Ya Rabbi, because I don't know if I'm going to die, don't let me to die in this situation. Don't let me to die with punishment. If in the morning I should die and I know that I have these characteristics. I don't want to enter into your punishment and when you truly believe Allah is going to punish you and you're sitting and crying all night long then they inspire within your heart, begin to attack that characteristic, begin to make your salawats and focus on that characteristic that's bad and overcome that. And for every sickness Allah has a cure. So then they begin to understand, they understand when they're angry. They understand when they're jealous and how to write down why are you jealous based on yourself, 
not based on other people but what is the role that you play within that characteristic and then identify it. So there's a whole science in that, we have that in the meditation book, the timeless reality. So alhamdulillah people have to use it, meditate and the whole ocean of tafakkur and contemplation is immense. If, if, if our ibadah and our salah and all the usul is a tip of a pyramid. So if anyone wants to understand the deen, Islam is only the tip that you saw on a huge ocean, right? They came and said, I go to Jawma Shaykh, I made my salah, I gave my one percent, five dollars in a year of my zakah, uh, I eventually will make hajj when I'm 80 years old and uh, thank you very much. That's your tip. So if there's a huge ocean, just this little tip, your iman is a whole nother section coming out. And Maqam al Ihsan is a vast it, and that's under the ocean, you don't even see it like an iceberg. So people are, are amazed at themselves and they're only on the tip of this reality, they didn't reach anything. They merely accepted, once they come into acceptance they find this whole ocean under is this mountain is already hiding. So it's an entire mountain hidden and people are just playing with the tip thinking they got somewhere. But the vastness of it is under the ocean, under the reality. Then they come into iman and the ocean of iman, how immense that is. How difficult it is to love Prophet more than we love ourselves. And to continuously struggle in that ocean, continuously struggle in that ocean and meditate and contemplate and cry and love Prophet until the light of iman and faith is released into the heart of that servant and they experience a light entering within their heart. And that's an experience, it's not an expression and it's not a philosophy. Do they say, Shaykh I haven't had that light yet because you don't have faith yet. You have much of Islam, congratulations, but iman is a whole nother ocean and each one bigger than Mount Everest in its reality just to understand. Then from iman entering into the maqam al-ihsan in which everything to be crushed, everything to be tested, everything continuously to be flipped upside down, upside down so that you can find Allah in everything. Maqam al-ihsan is that to worship Allah as if you see Allah and if you don't see, Allah sees you. We described even before that that reality is that Prophet is watching you. And that to know that Prophet is watching you and that you should be looking at Prophet through everything. So that, that again is a huge and immense ocean of reality. So it means this way is, is, is a way in which to traverse and to go very deep into its practices, very deep into its realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, is there an adab to express gratitude or dedicate in some way to a specific member of the Holy Family? I've been overwhelmed during these days with a deep relief, love and sadness for Imam Hussain Yeah, the, I think the most beautific way that we've been pushing and putting and you should take that on social media and everybody should take that on social media is go to the charity website muslimcharity.com, go to the wells section and take the wells, each product like the well, take it and post it onto social media and say, for the sake of Imam and Hussain as salam and for the sake of their family that were denied water in a state of extreme battle and death, for the sake of their sacrifice I want to grant people water, I want a well to be named in the name of Imam al Husayn as salam and his Ahlul Bayt as Shuhadai Karbala and I want to give water on a time when they had no water. They had spiritually could have brought it but they succumbed to what Allah's will and the evilness of these people and, and not wanting to even give the family members water in the in the way that they were slaughtering them. So I think the greatest is to give water 
in the name of Imam al Hussein salam. Even tomorrow when people are fasting and Sunday people are fasting is to always remember the state of immense thirst and difficulty of that thirst. Even Sayyidina Abbas salam, how he was slaughtered just to bring water back to their camps so that they didn't have to, to die in a state of thirst. You know that we're not allowed to even make a qurban and a sacrifice an animal without giving it water because the, 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 horrific, the horrific state of thirst in a state of death. So you have to even give to creatures water before they're sacrificed and how they were denied access to water as a form of torture and, and evilness. So I think the greatest is to give water on these nights and to dedicate wells because these well then go for years until they have to be repaired. So this becomes a jariya that is immense, immensely blessed and we do it in the name of Imam al Hussein salam and shuhadai Karbala and that everyone who drink from it, drink from the, the kawthar of their realities. Do you think that if a well is coming in their names it's going to be like uh, any other? Or that their, their immense blessings that Allah has an immense love for them, anyone who drinks from that as if they drank from the zamzam and the kawthar inshaAllah. What we talked about earlier and throughout the year, this station of muhabbat and love is, is not an easy station to gain and to enter and this reality of who of guidance and the ocean of wudud is not easy to gain. There's a certain way in which the zawiyahs run and people thought that all zawiyahs are like that and then they travel and they found out, no they're not run like that. So not everything around is an orange thinking that every shaykh in the tariqah oh is from these lovers, absolutely not, these are darajats, they're not easy to achieve and many are not of that reality. And the style in which they speak is very apparent. So ahbab and lovers they are overwhelmed by the love that they have for Prophet and it dresses everything they do and everything they see, everything they speak. And the audience and students can feel the speech and feel the love of the shaykh. Not hear it because somebody can intellectualize and talk to people and through their brain and brain they, they didn't feel anything, they just heard it. But to feel through your soul somebody's immense love is a, is a blessing, is a dress, it's a reality and not to assume everyone has that. And that's the apex of tonight that in their community, how did they let that happen? How did they go out and hunt down Imam al Hussein as salam and 72 of his family members and companions and all of them direct bloodlines, I mean out of the family all grandchildren of Sayyidina Muhammad great-grandchildren, whatever their relationship, how did that happen? And that's, that's the danger that a community in which doesn't lay the foundation of what we talked about last night. If the foundation of their practice is not by inheritance but by practice and by, by struggle is a foundation of humility and its brick and mortar structure is based on khuluq and character, then that's a Divinely structure. And that's when the seeker is responsible to understand that all when they connect their heart, they can sense in their heart the immense love that's coming, the direction and guidance is based on this love and as a, resu as a result this is a very unique class. And it's not to be thought that 
everybody's doing that because that's exactly the opposite of the example. The example is that they were out in a field killing, you know they were praying Zohr and Asr and then killing the family. They break for Zohr, they called Azan, they made Salah and they slaughtered the children, they slaughtered the adolescents and the youth. So that's, that's our life and our understanding. That people who come against shaykhs, come against the Ahlul Bayt, come against these types of teachings, it's an immensely dangerous Yazid that exists within people to come against the real light and the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah We pray that Allah guide us and protect us and keep us within the very fragile ocean of this love and this muhabbat in which we operate by our heart, we can feel the love. There are habayibs that when they speak you can feel the ishq and the love when they speak. So it's not by here but it's by here inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi is there any diet we need to restrict during these days for the respect for Imam Hussain? Yeah, any any diet to restrict as we enter in tomorrow night and, and Sunday that we don't want any drumming out of the respect of their martyrdom and what they had tormented to Sitna Zainab and sort of def defaming and humiliating the Ahlul Bayt and the women of the household and parading them through the desert to disgrace and to humiliate the family of Sayyidina Muhammad out of respect for them then there's no need for drumming tomorrow night and, and Sunday definitely no drumming. And uh, I think Ahlul Sunnah has all of those criteria. they don't have weddings, they don't have celebrations on Ashura. And this is a time of, of remembrance that the beginnings are the maghfirah and, and the forgiveness. But on Yawm al Ashura, on the day in which the family was slaughtered, and not one but 73 families and, and companions who wanted to give their life in the way and to defend Imam al Husayn, as salam, that definitely is, is a day of, of immense sadness. And what was achieved by Imam al Husayn, as salam was a salvation. But that's for Imam and Hussain that he achieved a great salvation and a great gift for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad But for the audience and those whom are following that love, it should be a great day of sadness for us, not a celebration. It's a day of sadness in which the one whom we love more than we love ourselves, how they did that, how they slaughtered them. How did they so abusively slaughter the family of Prophet and the, the great amount of disgrace that they brought upon this earth and upon uh, all of creation. That how, how shaitan could have done that and these people who lend themselves to satanic understandings. So that, that has its place and its understanding and that Mawlana Shaykh described so many different realities but one of which is that we must shed a tear. When we love them and understand their sadness, we have to shed a tear and connect our hearts with them to understand sadness. Because people are emailing all the time that, my child is sick, my family is sick, this is this, this is this. And everyone wants to invoke a, a compassion for their situation and their family and their conditions. And, and if you put all of that aside and say that, are, are you anywhere comparable? to the condition of Sayyidina Muhammad family. No. So first we have to have tears for those whom are so important to us. Then we can cry for ourselves and our families and, and hope that other people have compassion for ourselves and our children on a day that they will need it and a day of difficulty that may come to them and to ourselves. So this way is about reflecting that when we have so much love for them, so much compassion for them, so much crying for them, you have something in your account that, Ya Rabbi that when it comes back home to ourselves, 
Oh Ya Rabbi please help me through this grief, help me through this difficulty, save me from this suffering. Anybody had a child that suffered or was sick or in difficulty, you pray out to the whole world to hear you. Well imagine those whom they have something in their account because they prayed and had compassion for the most beloved of Allah That's what's important in our lives is you have to store up your good deeds for a day that you may need them. If you don't need them in this dunya alhamdulillah for you, Allah spared you from difficult testing and difficult calamities. But we need it in the grave most of all. That when Allah want to bring an accounting and say, for such and such this is the, the requirement, those tears, those actions, those loves are what save us. They become a, a, a being, they become these amal become immense beatific lights that can you imagine the angel that's created for the love of Sayyidina Imam al Husayn al Salam? And then when it came to Karbala you did this and when it came to this you cried for this. And this beatific angel comes and sits and says, I'm going to now cry for you. That Allah not to punish you because the tears of these believers extinguish the fire of hellfire. So we can't understand that one tear in this dunya, what Allah opens in akhirah of malaika that if they cry, extinguish any type of fire that coming to the servant. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah Allah give us the best of deeds and best of actions and best of character. It only costs the character. So I said, pray for the people whom you love, it doesn't cost you anything. It just shows you have good character, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the reality of the green dome in Medina and the green color in Naqshbandi order? Alhamdulillah, the green is the sign of resurrection and a favorite color for Sayyidina Muhammad and alhamdulillah anyone who's seen the turban then understands it's the turban of Prophet But they call it to topi, the, the cone and around the cone you wrap your kafan, the cloth of your burial. So this is a, a reality that the servant should carry his kafan with him because there was no ambulance service. 500 years ago if you died in the middle of desert your friends didn't call ambulance and say, okay come there's a body we, we're scared to death, we don't know what to do with this dead guy. So it was a symbol in our lives that we, we walk with death as a reminder at all times. So we carry the, the cone, the, the, the top hat which was the sunnah and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why the green dome is the symbol. And Allah asked, they have eyes but do they see? So people see our turbans, even if you take it for hajj they see the turban they say, why you look like that? You can't argue with these are the bosses that run and <laughs> say, but uh, the main boss, do you see the green dome? But again they have eyes, they don't see, so you can't say anything. The symbols of Allah are always very clear but people have to have eyes to see. You see the dome and you see this is the turban and the reality of Prophet And so that we carry that as a crown upon our heads that Allah gave us the honour in which to, to have that reality, to carry that reality. And the turban cloth is the kafan for a burial shroud. In the event that that time somebody had passed away, they immediately wrap them with the shroud and make janazah, put them in the dirt and it's finished. As a result of carrying that with us we're continuously reminded we're merely travellers upon this earth, our home is in paradise inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam what does it mean if you feel like you have a negative energy veil over you which prevents you from contemplating any event? It can't be that negative, means again these are, you know, these are different issues. Some, some people are, are chemically imbalanced and their perception of negativity is very strong. That's why then they require a chemical adjustment. 
But anyone operating on a normal basis because with any type of deficiency you first have to get yourself straight. Then things will become understood. If the neurons are not firing correctly everything will be like a, a cloud over the person, everything will be sort of disappointing and depressing. So first put that aside and say that somebody who doesn't have a chemical imbalance they can't be off that bad if they're able to listen to this talk and to watch the live stream. So it's not something that a negativity is, is hovering over them though otherwise they wouldn't let you watch the live stream. So people really have no idea what negativity is until you know there are creatures that come and rip people to pieces, they have scratches and attacks and all sorts of horrific things. Negativity is not shy, so it doesn't beat you with a cotton and then you can text in the comments that I'm, I'm, I'm under attack. When it attacks you know that you've been attacked and it's a very horrific attack. Other than that it's all in the mind and in the heart, sit, meditate, contemplate, give sadaqah, do your prayers, make your salawats and struggle through whatever type of difficulty or darkness is perceived and, and could be real and unreal. Real negativity is something completely unimaginable for most people, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How to bring down the inner voice causing low self-esteem especially for young adults? The salawats and the muraqabah, the alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah is a zikr so that to have the thankfulness and praising of Allah is that we have to praise Allah as Allah deserves to be praised and continuously praising as all creation is praising our Creator. And then shukr that, Ya Rabbi from whatever you gave me if I think it's enough or not enough it doesn't matter because it could always go down. So that to have a shukr and a thankfulness to Allah meditating to get more energy. So when, I, when your battery is low on your toys and, and your different devices, your phone every five, six hours is giving you a warning sign the battery is low. So what do you do? You plug in and you charge the battery. Well what do you think about the heart? Allah has us charging five times a day. So the salah and the praying is to charge the battery. Right? So in the salah it's not over that you quickly do it and go but in the times of Asr and Maghrib or Salatul Isha when it's quiet pray and at the end of the prayer begin to connect your heart, meditate and, and do the tafakkur and contemplation so that to bring an energy onto the soul and to recharge the battery. Otherwise where do we think it's going to be charged from? So again it's all in the practices and later once we charge our battery we go through our day and our accounting of our day and say, where am I depleting my battery the most? Some people have fa family gatherings or certain people or, or work or events or they go after work to the mall and they, they trace everything and find when do you get the, 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 the most energy attack or the most depletion of energy and then you begin to sort of confront that, that when you come home from that type of event then shower, wash and meditate at that time to recharge the battery. It's all important to know oneself when their energy is low, what's lowering it? What's pulling the, the charge from my battery so fast? Usually it lasts for so many hours with no problem. So then we become self-aware, certain acts make me very tired, make my feet to feel like they're on fire and I become exhausted. So I know those, I know that I have to wash and shower and immediately go into water to recharge my battery because the, the dunya is just depleting and pulling it too fast. So it's about somebody becoming self-aware and knowing themselves and knowing how to, to deal with the energy and how to build it and not to lose it inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Respected Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Forgive me for my bad adab, please advise if there's no reply to a sent email how can we be sure if it's been received? 
Then it again. You know that you're, you're dealing with an organization of volunteers, although we may look like, you know, Tesla with the hundreds of millions of dollars of employees and the thousands of uh, staff members who are sitting and typing, it's probably just a couple people. So if you didn't get a reply, send it again. And you didn't get a reply, send it again, alhamdulillah. It didn't cost you anything. Emails today are still free. Alhamdulillah. Just keep being patient, send it. If you ordered something, it didn't come, send another one, oh where's this, where's that, how's this? This is all a test and patience. This is not a, a huge organization, it's definitely not Costco, it's not Tesla, so there's no staff of a thousand people paid on staff, you know, we're typing letters back and forth. There's people coming, volunteering and in between their work trying to help and, and order things and, and to email and reply to things. So it's just a way of, of patience and sabr and your faith. If Allah wants something to be answered, do you think it would escape anything? No. So it would have been answered. Now other than that, maybe it's not that big a priority, so keep sending it, keep sending it and alhamdulillah it'll come. But we said this tariqah comes and tests us in ways we never understood. We would have a zikr and people would come up, Shaykh, how come you serve the dinner late? How come you serve the dinner late? It's 11 o'clock, why are we having dinner? It said, look this is a zikr, it's not a restaurant. This was not a, a restaurant that was supposed to serve you dinner at 6 o'clock or early bird special for senior <laughs> citizens at 5 o'clock, it's a zikr. That we're coming for the zikr of Allah Now by the way we give food too but be patient, the food comes early. If you're hungry, eat something at home so that you have a patience, a tolerance. I'm not going for intention of food, I'm going to eat something, give something to my children and my family because not shelter so we all have food at home, we eat and we come to the zikr patient and say, Alhamdulillah I did zikr, oh what a bounty, Allah also has some food for me, some, some sweets and, and tea for me, alhamdulillah. So the tariqah is, the same, is, is that at every level we have to be patient and show good character and Allah grants a reward. So alhamdulillah. Even the email can come by uh, inspiration. You can be getting the answer to your email in every talk but you're too busy maybe focusing on the email and you didn't even hear the answer in the talk. Or they can come and answer it in your dream. So most likely if you check it's probably been answered, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah I didn't know anything about Imam Hussain until you. Uh, I know nothing about Imam Hassan, how can I learn best? Uh, go to nurmuhammad.com, nurmuhammad.com uh, or through our app. If you have the app, the Muhammadan Way app, it links to the Nur Muhammad website and type in in the search, Imam al-Hasan, uh, Ahlul Bayt, uh, Sitna Fatima, we have articles of realities based on what they represent on the holy eyes of Prophet That Imam al-Hasan represents uh, Sifat al-Rahman and Imam al-Husayn represents the attribute of Rahim and both of them represent the eyes of Prophet, Qurat al-Ain, Jadd al-Hasanin wal Husayn, the beatific or the, the beauty of the prophetic eyes, uh, the realities of these souls. So if we want the ha haqqaiqs then you go to the website, if you want the history go to Wikipedia. So you go to Wikipedia, read the history and okay who they were, how they were born, what their children. But if you want the haqqaiqs and the realities just go to Nur Muhammad, put in the search engine and for the Ahlul Bayt and for the realities of Ahlul Bayt and alhamdulillah they're, they're there. And then the article that you get and I would recommend anytime there's a talk and they put the article out, get the article. Because you'd know how I talk is, is like a synopsis, very short. The article actually will have the entire hadith and all ayatul Qur'an. So it become like a scholastic, it'll have the talk with all references to Qur'an and hadith. And then those you can print and understand it and, and send it, so they're, they're very sort of, very complete the articles inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam 
When, when we connect our heart with the 72 martyrs and Imam Hussein, what should we be asking? That Imam Hussein salam to intercede for us, that to be dressed by that character, to be dressed by that love, to be dressed by that ishq and that his, his light to intercede for us and that his intercession is, is great. Allah gave immense, immense amount of power to that reality of Imam al Hussein as salam and that the reality of shuhada and, and mushahada, the state of witnessing and the opening of the heart, it has to be signed by Imam al Hussein as salam. So sainthood has to be signed by Imam Ali salam. No matter what tariqah, no matter how you're training, your soul has to be signed off by Imam Ali Salam for sainthood. So that's the way that the government of Sayyidina Muhammad is established. No matter what shaykh is training an individual, Imam Ali Salam is observing that soul. So sainthood to be granted has to be signed by Imam Ali Salam and this is a from uh, Imam al-Rabbani and Naqshbandiya. So these are historic texts that verify yes, all sainthood must be signed by Imam Ali And all spiritual vision because Sayyid al-Shuhada is the master of those whom are martyred or witnessing. So that means that the station of witnessing its master because nobody has establish their physical martyrdom to the degree in which Imam al Hussein has set his precedence that his title is the master of witnessing. So it means that Imam al Hussein has to sign on the servants whom become Ahlul Basira, those whom their hearts are open to begin to see. So the love and respect and admiration for Imam al Hussein then is essential on the spiritual path. And because we teach muraqaba and be, because our connection with these Ahlul Bayt is very significant, there's a link why the shaykh who teaches muraqaba and spiritual vision is very closely linked to Imam Ali Salam and Imam Al Hussein as Salam. So that you love them, respect them, keep them within your heart so that they can sign off on your reality inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi what's the meaning of having short term memory loss and bad memory all together? Is there a remedy for this? I would imagine there's a remedy for everything but the salawats, the meditation, all of the practices and depending upon again what are we trying to remember. If it has to do with dunya, uh, when somebody's heart is not into dunya it's hard to remember anything from dunya. I, I couldn't remember a sentence of anything I've read in dunya. For more my life in school, I can't remember whatever they taught me and had no interest in it, nothing uh, of any purpose in my heart. But if I read something from a reality then it burns within my soul. So it depends upon what somebody is trying to remember or understand or recollect. So if we become more towards akhirah and our soul is lighter moving towards heavens, retention of heavenly knowledge becomes more apparent. They can read realities, they can listen to the talk, they can begin to verbatim give you back the talk because they're absorbing it by the soul. So we have these two beings, soul and body. If the person is very dunya, they don't understand a single word I'm saying and I have the ability to put them to sleep. So if I would visit relatives, if they would ask me a question and for some foolish reason I would try to give them a spiritual answer because I, I learned not to do that but for some reason if I did that they were all asleep. It wasn't in their program at all just mm, shut down. 
So if somebody is very much into dunya then they retain everything about dunya. They tell you every football game, every baseball ball that was thrown, every, every award that was given, everything because the dunya desire is what their heart is moving for. And anything from akhirah they have absolutely no interest. So that these two, two beings we have to see where we are on this tug of war scale. If I'm retaining more information from dunya but I haven't a slingest idea of what you're talking about Jay, or when I hear you and it completely escapes me then means increase my spiritual practices. Definitely you should be meditating a lot more, be connecting, make sure the fires and the energy is coming to you so that you feel like you're more of a death state in which you died from the material world and more of your spirituality is coming, the taste of the material world leaves, the taste of uh, dunya news and, and dunya events and this and that and all these ridiculous things that people are running after like a ball and they get paid 400 million dollars to kick this ball back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and the ball changes to have a bat and then they bat the ball then they hit the, and this is their whole life is the movement of this ball back and forth, okay with this dunya. But when we meditate and send spiritual practices we find our soul becoming more active as a result we retain the knowledges, the talks, the, the articles, the books and that means that the soul is more active and the energy is more onto the side of the soul and whatever the soul gains of knowledge is that's eternal. So the knowledge that the soul gains is a gift that becomes eternal, you take it for all of eternity with you. The knowledge of your soccer game absolutely has no value in heavens, right? It's not something you take with you. It becomes, it becomes considered wasted time and wasted knowledges. Whatever came to you of that was of no benefit. Whatever you seek of knowledges it eternally dresses the soul. All of eternity that that person will carry that knowledge with their soul into paradise and into the realities in which Allah sends them. So then which one is more important to invest in? That which will have no benefit whatsoever in another few years if you're 50 and you're going to die by 80 and 30 years none of what you were involved with will have any benefit for your eternity. Or you spend your time in developing your eternity. Then imagine your portfolio in heaven, everybody wants digital uh, portfolios and assets and real estate. Imagine the size of your portfolio in heaven when you invested in all of spiritual realities, how those realities will bloom and blossom mm. in eternity in the, in the barzakh and in the world of malakut. That's what Allah is describing, hey you got to have, you have an eternal journey that has no beginning and no end. And your life on this earth is like a dot, you know that when you have a linear expression that has no beginning and no end, an infinite line, infinite line is for infinity. Your life is 60 years, it's not even a dot on that line and you're spending your time on the dot instead of the line. So that's, that's the great mischief of shaitan that he came and taught us that you should focus on this little dot that actually can't be seen because infinity a line that has no beginning and no end. So the guides they come to teach us focus on the infinity, the reward is something that can't be imagined inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah I had an urge to donate to the well project all day and kept resisting until you talked about Imam Hussain tonight. How can I discern silent guidance better to know when it is from Allah versus the nafs? We said before, yeah anything from the nafs is against Allah. So the nafs, oh go tell this person they're wrong, uh, go tell this person they're praying wrong, go correct this, go correct that, that's all nafsani. Anything from the soul is going to be hard on you. It's going to empty your account, it's going to take away your strength, you're going to be praying all night long, you're going to be making your zikr all the… the, the soul comes and inspires you, pray 20 rakahs now. You say, no way I'm not going to do that. 
go now and then sit in the room and start making your tasbih and your zikr. That's only inspirations that come that are hard against the self. Give now, do this, go out and give food, go out and, and apologize to the people that you hurt. Those are from the soul. Allah never and, and never guides anyone to not do something good. That's why we say, there is no bidah and ibadah, there is no innovation in worshipness. So it means anything that is in the, in the realm of worshipness and doing good, the soul is inspiring. Anything that is, is harmful and, and builds arrogance and harms other people, harms oneself is then from the nafs. But unfortunately 90% of the people listen to their nafs and ignore their soul. They go out and correct people. So that if you go to the masjid, not to zikr places, what happens as soon as you walk into a masjid? Somebody's got their toes all over your feet. What the heck are you doing? Nobody prays like this. Why do you have your feet on my feet and why are you worried about my feet? Allah is going to call you on the day of judgment and say, where was Nurjan's feet when he was making salah? No. So you can see what's happening. People are focusing on, on themselves and other… not on themselves, they focus on other people. That's how you understand if you came into a tariqah center or you came into a regular place where they believe they're, they're worshipping Allah You can see how someone was trained or not trained. You come into a tariqah place, they have no business with you at all. They've been trained to fix themselves and to fear that Allah is going to question them. So their whole life is about how to correct themselves and make sure the guests are happy. So that they don't go away and say, I'm never coming back because of you. But in the masjid there's no training. So you walk in, everybody, Akhi move back here, Akhi put your toes here, Akhi don't go like this. Nobody fixing themselves, everybody fixing someone else. And that's, that's the danger, that's when we know what the benefit of tariqah is. Tariqah is give other people and you know focus on oneself and correcting oneself inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Muhammad Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bisiri Surat al-Fatiha.